Hello and welcome. The Sins 3 premiered on the Disney Channel over this past weekend and obviously I had to watch it even though I'm not a huge fan of these films for a couple of reasons. I reviewed both of them last year and therefore this is technically the ending I assume. So I had to give it a go. Secondly, it's interesting and also very sad because we all know that Cameron Boyce, who played Carlos in the films, passed away. Obviously we have to mention that because that's a very important issue that has happened. Nothing has happened like this with any other films. No stars have died young unexpectedly. It's a little bit jarring because these kids are watching these films. Obviously these films are targeted and marketed to kids and a lot of them are very young and they don't understand what it means when someone dies unfortunately but Disney definitely took this in a very positive light and they had a very beautiful tribute to Cameron both before and after the film ended. So it was very sweet to see. I never really grew up with him. I was always older so my Disney Channel days were Selena Gomez, Jonas Brothers, Lizzie McGuire, Raven Simone, old Hilary Duff, uh, even Shia LaBeouf and Christy Harlan Romano with even Stevens. Like I was basically in the beginning of Disney Channel when it was first like started having Disney Channel stars. So when Cameron was on TV with Jesse, I really didn't watch it that much. That was basically past my prime for Disney Channel. So I never really paid attention to him but obviously he's in these films and I never had issues with his character. He always seemed really nice but I definitely wasn't affected by him so I wasn't sad because he just wasn't a part of my life but I can understand and obviously sympathize with everyone that really related to him that looked forward to seeing him on television as an actor and really enjoyed his acting skills because that guy could dance and he can sing for the most part and he's a pretty good like I really enjoyed his performance in this last one and I could definitely see how people were able to sympathize and they were kept saying how he was all sunshine and bright and they definitely showed that the tribute so he seemed like he had a lot going for him but I mean <laughs> he did pass away so as sad as it is he did definitely have a legacy and that's positive to think about so logically as not trying to take away from the death here, but there's nothing else we could do if there would be a fourth film. This has to be the ending of the Descendant films. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about it as it's the end of the Descendant films and they definitely tied everything up for the most part. And I actually watched this film twice. I watched it the night it came out and then I watched it again the second time. And I'm really glad I did because I picked up on a lot more things now that I knew what was happening. Because I gotta say, this film is basically fantastic for the most part. These Ascendant films are not good compared to legit Hollywood films and they're never gonna win any Oscars. They weren't made for that. They were just a very cute children's entertainment that had a terrible first film and a very terrible second film that was a little bit better than the first film but if you go back to my reviews you'll see I never enjoyed them at all. I've also compared every single film to a different series Ever After High and I will still do that because even in this one there are too many similarities that I felt that they pulled from Ever After High. Probably not on purpose even in this film, there's a lot that happens that can go pack or that you can compare to Ever After High, especially what the design looks. But we'll talk about them more in a minute. I will admit that I genuinely loved this film for the most part. They had a lot of pros, they had a lot of cons. As always, this is far from perfect and there was a lot of things that I was questioning while watching it. There are a lot of things that I also noticed that were not related to the storyline. One of these things was obviously the budget for effects 
and the budget for costuming. They did a fantastic, amazing job on costuming. I feel like they put too much budget into costuming, honestly, because everyone had their own unique looks, and because I am a cosplayer and I know how much things cost, I spent more time staring at the TV questioning how much everything costs for them to make costume-wise instead of the set design or the actors or anything else. I was just literally questioning being like, how much did this cost to put this outfit together because this does not look cheap. Everything looks crazy expensive and it's definitely otherworldly but at the same time you would never ever ever find anything close to this even on the runway. So it's just very unique fashion sense and I do appreciate what they put into it and the makeup on everyone looked fantastic as well. Like everyone looked gorgeous. They looked beautiful but it was all superficial. If you put all your time and effort into costuming and makeup and think just because they look good makes it a good film, no. Their effects did also improve a lot though and I will give them a lot of credit, especially compared to the first film which it came out in 2015. I know it was a Disney Channel original movie so they probably had a lot smaller budget, they had to do with what they worked with and they did decently, but they've definitely improved a lot so you can see how successful this franchise is. I don't understand why because there's a lot lacking in it, but they have improved a lot and I will give them credit where it's due. As always, the same cast is back that was in the original two films, so Duff Cameron, Sophia Carson, Boo Boo Stewart, and of course Cameron Boyce, who we already talked about has passed away, so rest in peace Cameron Boyce. And then we also have the same people from the previous, so China and McLean, um, Uma's back, Mitchell Hope plays Ben, he's back, and then reintroducing new adults we have Cheyenne Jackson who is Hades who I love so much he's literally one of the best parts of this movie I love Cheyenne Jackson he's a fantastic actor he did a lot with American Horror Story as well as other things and Broadway that I've known him from so I do really adore him he's awesome I do love 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 what he did with this role too and I am obviously a Hades fangirl so basically any Hades I will love. We could talk about the exception once upon a time but that's not related. That Hades wasn't my favorite but every other Hades this was I was so happy so happy to see what they did with Hades. It's the little detailed set pieces that they have beware of dog and it's the three dog heads and they have get out in that traditional Greek lettering I really admire what they did with Hades so thank you that's a definite pro. My other favorite person in this film is Thomas Doherty, I believe that's how you say his name. Uh, he's Scottish. I, I gushed over him in the last film because he's beautiful and he's Scottish and I love him so much. And I'm a little jealous that uh, Dove Cameron is dating him because I looked it up on IMDb and they say that they're together. Otherwise I would have no idea because they're all younger than I am. But he is amazing as Hook. He definitely portrays the son of Hook so well and I do really appreciate their character development with that. On the other side of that, and I think I argued this in the last film with Gaston's son, why is he a pirate? I still don't understand how he's a pirate. Gaston was never a pirate. There was no correlation of how his son would just become a pirate if they're supposed to be stereotypes of their fairy tale parents. And they're not trying to break a mold. There was never explanations for anything except for Mel changing from bad to good and obviously that whole plot point in every film that you could be bad, you could be good, it doesn't matter where you come from, but then you don't understand why Gaston's son is a pirate. This annoys me. Please explain. We're diving into some spoilers because we gotta talk about the whole film and dissect the whole film. That's your warning. Okay. So the plot of this film is that now they are able to go back and forth between the Isle of the Lost and Oridon and the four of them are able to pick a couple of kids to bring back into Oridon and slowly take them instead of just breaking down the barrier and give them a chance. However, there are threats happening 
on Oridon because Audrey, Aubrey, the daughter of Aurora, Sleeping Beauty, decided that she had enough because guess what? Mel and Ben got engaged. How old are they that they're able to get engaged? That was my first question. I don't know how old these kids are. Aren't they in high school? Like I know it's fairy tales, but that just was very weird to me that they're already engaged. And because they used to date in the first movie before Mel came in and took Ben's heart away, Aubrey decided she wants to have her queendom and she wants to be queen. So she ends up going and breaking into their hall where they have everything displayed, the good and bad, which I don't understand why they have it as a museum when people almost died because of what happened to these events. She breaks in in song and grabs the crown and scepter and then becomes evil. Now, I really did enjoy this plot point. I loved the seriousness that they had that she, the good princess, turns bad to get revenge on what she wants. And the role reversal was fantastic. Very, very strong plot point. However, going back to Ever After High here, there is the daughter of the evil queen in Ever After High called Raven Queen. Take a look at her outfit. Take a look. Take a look at Aubrey's outfit. They look the same! Why? And this is where I don't know, it probably wasn't a coincidence, but it was very similar and after Ever After High is still superior compared to Descendants. I really did love Aubrey's performance. She did a fantastic job being evil, for the most part. There are still a lot of cringy moments in here where she's just staring sideways and you clearly have the fan blowing into her face as she's looking into her scepter here. The other issue that was a major issue for me were the songs, but not only the songs, the fourth wall breaking into the songs. There was too many times where they're over talking and having a serious monologue moment and then they stare at the camera and they're talking to the camera in song and it drove me insane. The songs were really also a con for me because I was honestly really enjoying the storyline. I was very I was enjoying the plot. I was wrapped up with the twist. They had fantastic twists that I was really into and was really surprised by and they did a wonderful job with that. But then when they had a serious moment, then it would break into song and it would completely take me away from enjoying it again. I did not like any of the songs. The lyrics were on the nose too much. And even though some of them were a little bit catchy and I did like the music, the lyrics and the fourth wall breaking into the camera ruined everything for me. One of the songs that I hated as an example was whatever the suit of armor song is. I don't even feel like looking up names because I hated it so much. but. Aubrey tries to attack the villain kids with a room of suits of armor and Mel and Uma end up working together and fighting back but instead of just letting the suits stop and breaking the spell they decide to make them dance. And yes I know because it's a musical as Kenny Ortega directed this and you have to make sure you have a lot of dancing in these films because that's a trademark of his but it just came off so cringy and corny and unrealistic because even when they're fighting with the swords, it's not just like fighting actual bump bump bump. It's just like, let's set it to music and fight very slow mo dramatic fighting. And it took it away and I wasn't enjoying it at all. And then the girls decided to dance. And this is me sounding old, but for a a movie that's marketed to kids, I honestly felt that the dancing was a little bit too sensual for these girls to do. It was a lot of very, it was very inspired by Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera moves, but I just felt like these girls look too sexual. Am I the only one? Am I that old now that I'm looking at this feeling that I'm uncomfortable watching this film because it's set for kids, but these dance moves? look like they belong on MTV. The 
another controversial moment that I'm going to throw it back to Hades. Because I love Hades. And I will stand for Hades. Always. But, we find out that the twist is that Hades is Mel's father. That he was married to Maleficent and they had her together. He decided to leave because he was sick of Maleficent and therefore abandoned Mel. And they have a whole song about it that they just decided, oh, okay, thank you for nothing. She acknowledges that it's her father, but they don't have a relationship together, even though they're very similar. And the song is showing that they're basically father and daughter similarity and that she has a lot of his personality too. But it doesn't come off like that. And even as the movie progresses, I'm just looking at this, not seeing a father-daughter relationship at all, but instead seeing very a lot of sexual tension. And it's very uncomfortable to me to watch because they do not act like father and daughter at all. And I know I'm not the only one when it comes to this because a friend of mine was also watching this film and I asked him the same exact question and he also agreed with this. They look like they are wannabe boyfriend and girlfriend instead of father and daughter. There was a lot there, especially at the end. She seemed to want to cuddle up with him. And yeah, it's a kid's movie and that's why it's uncomfortable to me to watch because <laughs> I mean, he's a beautiful person as is, and I did appreciate their aesthetic they gave him, that he was very rockabilly, and even the effects they gave to his hair was awesome. I did appreciate that once he got off the island and was able to get his magic back, that his hair was flaming, just like Hades in the past. So thank you, you had some really great moments in there. I also really appreciated how many throwback role reversals they had in this film. There's a point where the beast gets, well, that Ben gets turned into the beast again, just like his father, and he's running around the woods because he has a thorn in his paw. And that's totally obviously a throwback to the original film, the Disney film, where Belle has to calm him down because he has a thorn in his paw and she has to take it out. Carlos instead is the one to take it out, but it's still, I did appreciate that. And for our diehard Disney fans like us, that have grown up watching all the films and seeing this new adaptation of it. They did a very great job switching things up, but also throwing it back to the original storylines Disney-wise. I really would love to have seen more from this series. It was improving a lot. And from starting out hating it, which I still hate the first one so much, they really stepped up their game throughout the years. And this definitely was the best film in the franchise. It's just a shame of everything that happened, obviously, because this is the end. And the way they left it, it I would have loved to see this as like a legit TV series. Make it a little junior once upon a time. I was more interested in the backstories of the parents. And I would love to see more time broken down for these character development because I felt like a lot of these characters, because it was such a rushed film, they just 180'd their characters like that. There wasn't enough time for them to realistically, gradually change their character to the better. It wasn't enough time to go from point A to point B. It was literally just like, okay, you say one thing, I'm changing my mind now. We're all set, let's go. It was too fast, it was too rushed. If it wasn't a musical and they made it a legit serious movie, it would have been five times approved. I hated the songs and I love musicals, but I hated these songs. I hated the fourth wall breaking. It didn't work in the situation. And there was too many cringy moments still. And I think too, because a lot of the actors are older now, a lot of them are over in their twenties that they're adults. For them playing teenagers, it doesn't always work out. It definitely improved and I would watch this again. I watched it twice already so this is something that definitely impressed me a lot. I was very very impressed for the most part because I had no expectations going into it. However, I still recommend instead of this film, instead of this franchise, go watch Ever After High instead. It's not Disney, it's Mattel, but they still did so much better of this concept so much earlier and Nothing Descendants does will improve on that. Go watch Ever After High instead.
that's not even a sponsorship obviously because I'm not getting paid by them but I still very admire that series and it is a series so they have the time to show the parents to show the kids to show what happened and you have a lot more questions answered compared to here where now I want to know who else married each other because Maleficent and Hades got married to each other but then who married Cruella? Who married Jafar? Were they married to each other? And then they didn't tell Carlos and Jay that they're brothers? There are so many fan theories that we could come up with this. I am now invested in this stupid thing. There was still a lot more that they could have done with it. Okay I'm done ranting. <laughs> I could keep ranting on these films forever because there's always so much to say and I, every time I watch these films I'm literally screaming at the TV with 50 billion questions but it's done. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a magical day as always and I will see you real soon.